Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Ron's Crypto Therapy. It's been a while since we've been able to make a video. I've been very busy, so I'm glad to be back online and making another small cap video. I got a lot of good feedback on the uh, two previous small cap videos, so this one's going to be much better. It's a lot more comprehensive, a lot more uh, polished list of um, small caps. We're going to go to the top 15 and then um, five for honorable mention. And there's another five to ten that I like, like as well. But, you know, you have to, uh, to prioritize at some point. And that's why we're doing this list. We're going to take a look at these. Um, so right here, you see the, the chart I have up. is the, It's called the altcoin index. And um, this is probably the best chart that you can look at of, on what the total um, altcoin market as a whole is, is, is doing. So, you know, you see a lot of people on Twitter saying, you know, alt's going to go even lower and, and all these kinds of things. And, you know, they very well might. But if you're DCA in these projects to hold for the bull run for a huge return, then, you know, anytime it's under this blue line here, that's not a bad time to, to DCA alts. Now, obviously, when, you know, each one's going to have its own technical analysis, you want to have a plan. And then this video, I'll try to go over how I DCA certain alt projects. But, you know, I've seen um, a lot of talk on Twitter recently with, with the Bitcoin pumping the other day off that fake ETF news. And a lot of maxis, BTC maxis, are talking about, well, you know, Bitcoin pumped 10%, alts only went up 2%. That you should know that, you know, they're all shit coins. You know, everybody just buy Bitcoin and, and go from there. And I love Bitcoin. Bitcoin is my favorite crypto. Um, Bitcoin is the king. There's no doubt about it. However, at this point in the game for Bitcoin, you're not going to get rich off of Bitcoin. Not unless you have a lot of money to, to put into it. So your best chance to hit the home run for next market cycle when the bull cycle comes back is the DCA, these alt projects that you like. Um, you know, but be prepared. You could put $1,000 into it and next week it could be $500 <clears throat> value. If you're going to sell it for the bull market, then don't worry about it. Worry about the bag size and not the, the USD value would be my best advice because it can be hard mentally holding a bag of alts that goes up and down a lot and trying to hold it for, for the, uh, the home run for the bull cycle. You know, it's, it's taxing on you mentally, so be prepared for that. It's a long journey to the top of the bull cycle to, to get these 100x returns on altcoins. So... Uh, one thing people ask me sometimes is, well, well, how are you assessing these altcoins? Like, what are you looking at? What are you just drawing names out of a hat or, or, or what's going on? So these are the things that I look at when I'm assessing these altcoins and we're going to look at. <clears throat> so first and foremost is market cap, which for anyone who doesn't know what market cap is, that's the total money invested in the project. So we want to find low caps, although I will say that the market cap can be relative to the project. Uh, there's one project that I have fairly high that has, I think, uh, you know, 40 million market cap or so. I would definitely like that to be lower. However, if it's a project with just killer fundamentals, a killer team, and I think it can definitely get, hit a billion easily and keep going, then I could still consider 40 to 50 a small cap. But generally speaking, I like it to be less than 20, you know, maybe even less than 10. Um, some of these good ones that, that we've identified, they were less than 10 and now, now they're not anymore. But market cap, first and foremost. You know, I even put market cap above the fundamentals because if the market cap is, is low enough and it has any fundamentals at all, then, well, you can still get a good gain off of it. So the next thing I look at is circulating supply. <clears throat> um, and that's how many tokens have been unlocked. And that, that can be a, a, a big thing to look at. Now, just because something only like 10% on, on uh, say something has a $10 million market cap and only 10% is, is in circulating supply, so the fully diluted is over $100 million. You might be like, oh, well, see, that's a scam. See, they're really the fully diluted. Well, not necessarily. You want to look in the white paper and see when those unlocks are and the details around them. And we are going to do that for some of these projects as well. Because just because it has a, a, a higher, a very high fully, like the fully diluted and the actual market cap is a big difference, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you want to stay away from it. Uh, and then next is the fundamentals. You know, we want to obviously, obviously buy things that... Um, that have good fundamentals, that, that are actual projects that are going to catch fire, that are going to make the news, that, that people are going to want to be involved with. And, you know, in crypto, a lot of it is smoke and mirrors, you know, and that's, I'm going to talk about that as we go down this list. <clears throat> the sector, that's another big thing I look at. Um, the sector of crypto it is, is it gaming? Is it privacy? Is it AI? Is it DEX? Um, all these things. I think that the the biggest returns next market cycle will come from the gaming sector. Um, but AI, that's a big one. Privacy is always big. Layer ones, new layer ones, new layer twos. Um, 
you know, who knows? By the end of the cycle, we may start seeing layer threes. Who knows? But the sector is a uh, it, it is I, I definitely weight the sector that it is. Um, and so if something's gaming, I'll tend to to favor it a little bit more. And is there a real product? Um, I think with crypto, if there's an actual real product, that's always a plus because some for so much of it, there's not an actual product. Um, how long has it been out? Um, and the reason I like this mostly, well, for one, <clears throat> most things have their biggest uh, gains in their first market cycle. So anything that was around last market cycle, I kind of, you know, take with a grain of salt. I, I mean, it doesn't mean that I won't invest in it or anything like that. But if I'm doing that, then I'm probably going to try to get a bigger, safer alt, something like Chainlink or Doge or something like that. Something that I think will definitely come back next cycle. Um, and I won't go for the small cap stuff that's been, already been out of cycle as much. Some of those things are just dead. Um, and I can show you a project, um, you know, that called like Dragon Chain, for example, if anyone's familiar with that. And the, the market cap is super, super low. And if you read the fundamentals, the fundamentals are like out of this world. But it's an, it's so old now. I don't think that it's going to, you know, catch on like that. You know, people want new, new things and, and stuff. So if it's got a low pro, uh, market cap and it's old, I, I generally stay away from it. Uh, social followings. I think that that's a good thing to look at. Twitter um, for gaming projects. Uh, what their game followings? That's another thing. Like not just look at the project itself, but look at the followings for the actual games that it has. Strength. What I mean by strength is <clears throat> what is it showing on chart? Like what strength is it showed in this uh, bear market? You see lots of coins. They kind of do this thing uh, that they the ICO, they go up this big spike, and then it's just a steady downfall for like ever. I think it's good when you see uh, something in like bearish market conditions. It's still either making all time highs sometime during that time period, or it showed some kind of strength that it didn't just wither away and sell off the, the entire time. Um, not and, and sometimes, I mean, that, that's, that can be okay. You know, if a project's got good fundamentals, sometimes it just. You know, just doesn't get the recognition and the uh, the the publicity that in the bear market in these market conditions, and it just it just kind of sells off, and it can still come back. But it's something to look at. Um, their website. Now, all these crypto projects pretty much have a fancy website, so it's not that I'm looking at their website to like I'm going to be impressed by how it looks. If I go to their website and I can't figure out what they're doing, or if their product isn't directly linked to their website like you see that with crypto a lot they say they're this they say they're that and you go to the website and you, you thumb around and you can't really figure out what it is or what they're doing and that, that can be a red flag to me i like stuff that's an actual product things in this term for that i'm trying to dca at a low price and hold for the bull market i like for there to be an actual uh website and then partnerships that's a good thing to look at as well is uh what kind of partnerships um do these these different places have because that can um that can lead you to down some roads too when you start start checking that out sometimes so those are the things that i'm primarily looking at for um when i assess the, these small caps so without further ado let's go ahead and start getting into number 15. 15 i'm gonna go through the honorable mention first and I'm not going to go into these uh, projects too much in detail, but if you want to check them out on your own and, and go in a little bit of a dive on them yourself. Um, the first one is Router Protocol. Um, the, the market cap is, is, is fairly low on, on this one, $26 million. Um, not the lowest, but I think it's definitely got some potential. Uh, Rubik, um, it's a DEX project. And it's like a cross-chain DEX, which you see that a lot. Um, doesn't have the market cap data here. I think it does on CoinGecko. It's 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 a small uh, market cap, and I like it pretty well. Um, Moonsama. It um I like it. I put it on a previous video and had it higher. Um, I'd like to see some more things out of it. You know, two point four million dollar market cap. They got some good gaming. It's sort of a gaming project. I like it okay. Uh, not enough to make the the top fifteen though. Uh, I think it's pronounced uh, Dion uh, Protocol. Um, it's something I came across uh, fairly recently um, in comparison to the, the rest of these projects. $15 million market cap. This one would have been probably the first one off the list um, that didn't quite make it, but I do like, like this one uh, a lot. And the last one for honorable mention, I actually like this one a lot too. It's called uh, Rosone. 
the uh, code is ROSX. It's on the Arbitrum network. Uh, less than a million dollar market cap now, and it's a uh, it's a Dex project, and it's it's fun. It's a fun project. Um, I would definitely um, encourage people to to check um, check this project out. Less than a million dollar market cap. I, I definitely think that this could hit. I mean, twenty million easily, like for for a twenty five x at the current price. Um, so yeah, I got those five as the honorable mentions. So now we're getting to number fifteen. So coming in at number fifteen, we got Wazder with a one point four eight million dollar market cap. Circulating supply is fairly good. You know, sixty percent. Uh, how long has the project been out? We go to the all time. Uh, it, it start. It came out like at the end of the bull run, at like the very last gas for all. So, this isn't the best chart that I've seen. The way it, it, it starts off like that and then sells off. But the reason I um, I kind of put an asterisk beside that is is when it came out. Um, so if it would have came out over here, I guess you still kind of have the same same thing going on. But um, if you look at when this was, this was like right before the FTX dump. So that was kind of a bearish time even though the dump was on like the the ninth prices were still fairly low here and the fact that it it, it almost made you know it got up here close to the all-time highs it, it, it did show some strength there um but since then it's really just been all uh downhill for wasder so wasder what is it well it's in the gaming sector um you get on mexc which i'm gonna put my uh link in the description um it doesn't say a whole lot um about what it it, it is here um, it says Wazder gives players a seamless gaming experience and a one easy to use app including fun ways to find friends, discover games, explore content, earn in-game items, build player identity and take uh, virtual self-expression to the next level. So from what I understand what Wazder is, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like um, Tinder for gamers. It puts you in, in it's like a, a social media app. There's not actual any gaming that happens on Wazder. Um, but it puts you in touch with other other people who are gamers, and you, you know, play with them or, or or do whatever. Their Twitter page, uh, twenty nine thousand followers, almost. That's a lot for a project with this small of a market cap. Um, if we go to their website, um, there's some things that I do like uh, about the website. Um, one thing I don't like, how I said earlier, it it doesn't really link you to what it does um, then that's kind of a red flag to me um, and, and if you scroll through it it doesn't really link you to it um, to what they do um, in, in my opinion now if you go to the App Store Google Play or Apple there is a Wazder app and that's where you get this at and that's what puts you in touch with all these people I didn't um, download it because I'm not a gamer um, but that's where it lives at, and it, it's not really clear what they do from their website. So I, I take a little, a few points off of it from that. Um, this goes over the tokenomics clearly on the the homepage. People behind the uh, the project, I actually looked into some of these people. Some of these people have worked for EA. Um, one of these people, I can't remember if he was the person that invented it or was it one of the people that was very first involved with Candy Crush. Um, one of these people also used to work for Reebok. It's a pretty good um, mixture of real life and crypto people. Then you see the partners. This is one thing that I've noticed is big. Google is a partner of theirs. Um, so I'm not sure exactly why. And I also have, it doesn't show it up here, but I found in some other research that Snapchat is a partner of theirs too. I don't know if that was early on and maybe they're not anymore because they're, they're not showing up here. Um, also Gala. Now, Full disclosure, I do not like Gala as a, as a project. Um, if you want to know why, you can ask me in the comments. I'll get into it more. But I, I don't love Gala. However, they are a big project with well over $100 million market cap. So it, if they're linked in to Wazder with some of their gaming and, and things like that, that certainly is not a, a negative. So these are some of the things about Wazder. Um, like I said, it's more of a social media gaming app than anything. If you go to their Telegram, their Telegram is pretty elaborate. Um, so they do have a, a, a pretty cool uh, telegram if you want to check that out. So anyway, Wazder, gaming sector, $1.5 million market cap. They're coming in at 15. We're coming in at 14, we have InsureAce and uh, with market cap of $1.8 million. And what InsureAce is is um, uh, insurance, like a crypto and DeFi 
uh, insurance. And when you look at the chart, it, it, it looks bad, but it had such a run up on the ICO, it's a little misleading that it just it went up so much on that. And I've seen that before. So if you go here and, and, and slide the cursor around, like price is moving around in there. It's not just like it went to zero and, and hasn't done anything. Um, but it, it, it doesn't look good, I'll say that. But I, I like the project a lot. So for this, I, I do think if you're buying it to make money, I think it's a little risky um, that it's not a slam dunk. But if there's a big hack or something like that, this thing could really, really, really uh, gain a lot overnight. And it did help a lot of people out during the Terra Luna um, collapse. And that, I like things that are a real project. And so they say here, you know, almost $12 million in claims paid, um, value covered. And it's a real sustainable insurance model where they can only, the system will only allow them to insure like how much that they have that they can pay out claims for. Um, it's a real good project. They got a good team. I've, I've uh, engaged with them on Twitter before. They, they insure all kinds of things, smart contract, smart contract vulnerability, custodial risks, uh, stable coin depegging. Um, it, it's, it's not a bad thing to, to look into. Um, on Twitter, they have a, a pretty good following, 41,000 followers for a, a small market cap like this. So I do think there are projects that you're maybe more likely to make money on, but I do think that this does have a lot of potential to catch fire and, and really go um, a long way if the right conditions happen. And with a $1.8 million market cap and an actual product, um, I like it at 14. For 13, we have Trios. Uh, Trios is a project you might see shield on Twitter a bit. I see it mentioned quite a bit. Uh, coming in at a market cap of 32 million, so fairly low. A little higher than what I like to see some of these projects, but Trios has a lot going on for it. If you look at the all-time chart, also something that I don't love to see, it just kind of mimicked the, um, the, the blow-offs of Bitcoin. Um, last cycle and then just di hasn't really shown much strength in these market conditions, but it hasn't been a complete sell-off either um, and You know looking at a chart like this this the scale, you know, this was this was up so high over here It, it kind of is misleading over here, but it's actually been trending up and and having some movement So I don't think it's a dead project even though it, it, it's been out for a few years and came out last cycle if, if, it, if something came out last cycle, I think it's okay if it was out before last cycle and Then that's the stuff if it has still a small market cap I, I tend to stay away from one good thing I like about trios a lot is you look at circulating supply and total supply. It's basically all out there um, so circulating supply big check on trios it's all there and I've also uh, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on trios even though i have done quite a bit of research um they're going to burn it and i if, if i'm uh, incorrect about that someone can correct me in the comments but i read that they're going to burn it and they have some good partnerships that i saw there's a lot of partnerships in asia that they have uh trios in a nutshell trios is a full stack decentralized trusted cloud infrastructure and ecosystem for all scale general purpose and enterprise friendly operations applications with a fine and delicate design and talented solid team with academic and industrial background and you see those kinds of things on a lot a lot of these things so, so vision that that can be enforced what are we trying to do trios aims to solve the core trust issues <clears throat> with trios we can root trust into machines with a firm assurance that machines will deterministically do what they are told to do and the more i research trios that's what it seems like they're really trying to uh autonomous systems smart contracts um, and you see a lot of this kind of terminology in um, a lot of layer one projects and, and blockchain ecosystems um, but I do think Trios stands out um, I like some of the things I see about them their social followings 83,000 that's a, a whole lot for a project with a 32 million market cap with everything fully diluted so all things considered, I, I do like uh, like Trios. We'll scroll down here and see what it says on uh, Coin Market Cap just real quick. And uh, in all platforms, supported native token application compatible smart track contract execution platform. You know, basically what we've been saying. So uh, that's Trios coming in at number thirteen. I like this project a lot. It could be a top five project the market caps a little higher and you know I was just 
you see charts like this sometimes this hasn't been out that long it came out around the FTX dump and I wish I'd have been paying more attention and been on this um, some alt flip uh, coin influencers that I follow actually did put it out several months ago and you know it just slipped through the cracks because I wish I would have got into it uh, earlier but I still think that given the project that 40 million I still consider that um, low enough to consider it a low cap because it's got a lot of potential um, I would like to see it come down to, to these levels down here and, and before I start DCA in it, so I'm not actively buying it right now. I would like to get a little bit better price, maybe around a 30 million mark, market cap or less. But what is Hello? So it's in the gaming and entertainment uh, sector. All right. Founded by multi award winning Hollywood director Paul Coslin. Hello Labs is blazing a path through the crypto industry by blending crypto and entertainment. Debut TV show Killer Whales combines the best elements of hit shows Shark Tank and America's Got Talent. So they're making this show right now called Killer Whales, and that's what it is. It's like a Shark Tank uh, for, for crypto. Here's the trailer. Buddy, crypto entrepreneurs from all over the world face off against the Killer Whale judges. You put 10 million of your own money into this project. Are and you crazy? I'm kind of crazy. It's coming in the elementary canal and it's ending up as decentralized diarrhea. So hopefully you guys can hear that a little bit. Um, here's your website and it talks about the, the shows, what it, it mainly focuses on. And um, these are some of the people that they're going to have, like the judges. Uh, I recognize some of them. It's Wendy O right there. You know, these are like the Mark Cubans and Damon Johns of, of the show. Um, but this guy, Paul Caslin, if you want to see who he is, he's the one behind the project. He's known for quite a few things. Uh, been involved with MTV and uh, on, on various projects. These are all the things that he's, he's directed and, and been a part of. So the guy definitely knows the entertainment industry. And he's trying to merge uh, the entertainment industry and, and crypto. And they have NFTs and they have some, some gaming and, and things like that. So just like a lot of projects, you know, they're not the only projects that wants to do gaming and NFTs, obviously, but I think that they're one that's going to be successful at it. And I think there's a lot of things to like about this project, even at a $40 million market cap. I like it. I would just like to get a, a better price on it before I really start DCA in it hard. Um, so that is Hello coming in at number 12. Coming at 11, we have Change. Change, another project I like. I've been into for a little while, uh, market cap of just below 30 million uh, so like some other projects a little little higher than I would like but I did get into it when it was lower and below low 20 million uh, circulating supply is not bad either around 50% um, the project came out around the, the like right before the second uh, Bitcoin all-time high and you see it made another all-time high later on after that when Bitcoin was actually going down over here um, in like December yeah and then you know it sold off but then it showed strength in the the bear market so I actually like to buy to buy it here um, and I have been DCA in it over the last several weeks maybe a month I like it at this level to, to buy um, on a uh, chart a candlestick chart if you look at this part it looks kind of like a, a falling wedge on a weekly to me so I think it's one that could break out in the upcoming weeks and months uh, so what is it it is a cross chain DEX so Chain Finance is a next generation DeFi app that stands as the most liquid Web3 trading venue on the market. Change provides various crypto management tools such as cross-chain wallet integration, um, compatible chains so that users can seamlessly swap and send and receive crypto across networks, um, an escrow model, a top DEX aggregator, a futures DEX, and the first decentralized options DEX all powered and secured by the innovative Fusion DCRM technology. Uh, their website's definitely um, fancy. <laughs> um, it's definitely a, kind of a catchy, fancy, fancy website. And, you know, basically it's a cross-chain DEX. Um, and uh, I, I think it's got some potential. I like the market cap. I like the way that they, they market and, and brand themselves. Um, see their Twitter following uh, 165,000 followers on Twitter that's enormous for a project of this size and when I show these Twitter followings I'm sure that um, 
that that some of these are, are bots on all these projects but it's still a good idea uh, it still gives you a good idea of the, the following and this is a popular one that I see shield by small cap influencers so I think there's something to there, there's some things to like here uh, market cap a little higher than what I would like I like it a lot at 20 million and below but here I do not think is a bad um, place to buy is circulating supply around 50 percent that's also not bad um, it's got an actual product and a DEX. Now, lots of projects have DEXs, but this one does seem to stand out above others, in my opinion. Um, it showed strength in the bear market. Um, so I think I think it checks some boxes. So change coming in just outside the top 10 at number 11. All right, now I'm breaking into the top 10 with Myria. Myria, Myria, I've heard it called both. I think it's actually Myria. Um, so there's a lot to like and not like about this project, I feel like. Some things when you look at, you're like, wow, that should be way above number 10. And then other ones, you're like, oh, that shouldn't even be number 10. Uh, market cap, 12 million. That's really good. Uh, Mario is in the gaming sector, um, which we're going to get into a little bit. Now, here's one of the negatives. Circulating supply only at 13%. And we're going to look at the white paper and, and what it says about that. Another thing, so well, it's new, so that's good. You know, it came out April of, of this year, but it has just been a complete sell off. I mean, to be down 80% in just a few months, like this has shown absolutely no strength at all. So, like I said, we're going to look at the positives and negatives. Now, there's a lot here, they have a lot listed on Coin Market Cap here. We're not going to go over all of it, but technically it's a layer two I said it's in the gaming so it's a layer two gaming a lot of people compare it to gala which I don't see a, the direct comparison but um, you know I guess you could you kind of compare it to, to gala a little bit so it's on ETH, an ETH layer two and you can see some of these things NFT blockchain gaming scaling partnerships uh, all these kinds of things if we look at their their website um, they also have nodes, um, and I've looked at their nodes. I think they're kind of expensive for, for what they are, um, but it just kind of mirrors uh, the, the things we just read. Uh, you see gaming, nodes, uh, there's NFT marketplace up here. Uh, now their following is massive on Twitter, 223,000 followers for a project with a $12 million market cap. And if you go back to their website, uh, this is the thing I like to look. So what is their, their number one game they have listed? So if they have this, have to figure this is like probably their number one game. I'm not sure what this cricket game is. I need to check that out. I actually uh, would like to, to know more about that. But if we look at the following on this Meta Rush game on Twitter, <clears throat> just the Meta Rush game has almost 40,000 followers. So there's some interest in their, their, their gaming. Now, I talked about the tokenomics and the, uh, the circulating supply. So this is the white paper, and this is the part where, where it talks about the tokenomics. These are um, where they get released to, and you see node em emissions. That's where a lot of it is going to go, and it talks about that there's a halving schedule that's distributed daily based on the, uh, the, the halving schedule that occurs every two years. The protocol will distribute approximately 12 million Myria tokens per day until this scheduled halving. The first halving will happen in year three, um, in which will decrease the daily distribution to 6 million Myria tokens per year. So it looks like a lot of that's gonna get distributed to the nodes and 12 million per day, and you look at how many total there are um, the circulating supply is already s 7 billion, um, and the max supply is uh, 50 billion, if, I, if I'm reading that right. If I have the decimal places right, it's big numbers. So 12 million a day sounds like a lot, but you're dealing with big numbers here. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, in some regards, I like the fundamentals of the project. Um, Gala had bad tokenomics last uh, cycle, and it still had a massive gain. I like the thing. I like the fundamentals of the project. I hate the strength that it's shown, the lack of strength that it's shown. I don't love the tokenomics. I love the market cap. It looks like I think you could. It's not going to get diluted too far. Um, like, like I think it's not going to get diluted before it has a big run up in the bull market. Um, uh, from from the circulating supply standpoint, I love the fundamentals of the project. 
I like the games. I like the NFTs. I think all that stuff's good. I think they're going to be successful. I just, I think there's some thing, a lot to like about it. I think there's some things to, to have some pause about it. But that's uh, starting top 10 with Myria Thor. Now, market cap, 90 million. And when I started making this list, the market cap was like 40. And this is the all-time chart of ATOR. And you can see it has shown um, unbelievable strength. It just keeps going up and up. And I had been buying it. Uh, see, it hasn't even been out came out this year and i had started buying it over the summer probably somewhere in here and it's just went up and up and i might actually sell out of the project soon because it's just um been been going up and i don't know how much longer it can go up another good thing about it circulating supply almost all um in circulating supply now um like i said i would like the market cap to be closer to like 40 or low or lower i think it had like a 25 million dollar market cap when i started buying it and this goes to show, you know, these small caps, uh, they don't always follow BTC. And I'll show that a little bit later in the video. Um, they, they, they tend to do their own thing a lot of times. So I said it's a privacy uh, project. Tor empowers the Onion Router Tor, which is how you get on the dark web. I, most people are probably familiar with what Tor is. Through on-chain incentives, facilitates wider adoption of secure network relay protocols through hardware products. So through hardware products, I'm gonna come back to that in a second. A framework of existing Tor relays and receive cryptocurrency rewards on our native ter uh, currency. You heard similar things of that before. You know, a router hotspot, handheld device that enables their users to connect to consumer devices via Wi-Fi, and route all their web traffic through a uh, Tor script free. So it's um, it's utilizing existing Tor technology for privacy now the hardware now i've from what i understand you have to order some hardware to for to to do this um i'm into and i'm gonna talk about another privacy project later in the countdown um that, that i'm into that you don't need any hardware so i haven't actually participated in tour i, I like that i like that i'm kind of partial to the privacy sector as well i think gaming will have the best gains but I do believe in, in privacy and, and crypto and, and, and what it stands for. So if we go to the ATOR website, I uh, don't really like this. Um, their website doesn't really show it what they do, um, like I had talked about. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. Um, you go to this dashboard here, and it, it'll show you like um, uh, some, some stats about the project. total users, active relays, bandwidth, uh, these kinds of things. And like I said, I've been told that you have to order some extra hardware to participate in it. And I mean, it says on the page hardware, um, and I haven't looked into it to that level because I wasn't interested in, um, in uh, participating in it. Um, but, you know, just talks more about the uh, end to end privacy and, and, and tour technology um, their Twitter page surprised me only 23,000 followers um, so I would expect something with a market cap like this to, to have a, a, a bigger uh, a bigger following somebody likes it because it has done nothing but go up since it came out and I would you know maybe it's gonna be one of those projects that just keeps going up and up I would be a little leery of DCAing it right now, and I would try to wait for some kind of pullback. Me personally, not, so that doesn't, you know, sometimes things just keep going up. You look at Caspa, that's something that's just kept going up, and people wait for a pullback. There's some other ones, there's a pro, two projects I'm gonna talk about later on in the pro, uh, countdown, and they never really had pullbacks either. So there's some things to like. I think the market cap's a little high right now. I love the circulating supply. I love that it's an actual product, even if I think there are, are um, better competitors out there. Um, I don't love that you have to get hardware um, to, to do it. But I think there's a lot to like with ATOR. A lot of top level uh, Twitter influencers love ATOR. It's one of the things I see shilled uh, by them most. So I, I definitely think, even though the market cap's kind of high right now, I, I think it's worthy to be in the top 10. So that's ATOR coming in at number nine. Cade. This is a project that I actually found on my own. I knew about it when it first came out, like back here in, in April at the, the ICO. And I thought I had really came, came up with something because I bought some here and then it went up and then you know, came down. And I think it got listed on MEXC here, which is actually not listed there anymore. And I had 
got back in and I saw I thought I really hit a home run here but then it kind of did that thing that some of these projects you see sometimes and it just sells off and it has not shown any strength at all since then so I still like it I like the fundamentals of it uh, also circulating supply around half that's not bad especially for a project um, this new market cap 5 million market cap up here was around 30 or 40 I think um, so I, I like it at this this market cap um, I don't and I like the circulating supply 50% is pretty good I don't like that it's shown absolutely no strength um, here the last several months so let's look at what it is a little bit <clears throat> the gaming obviously uh, ultimate web 3 community hub where gamers and blockchain fanatics can communicate and collaborate our vision is to create a fun and dynamic virtual hangout for like-minded people to enjoy all things game fine experience everything that web 3 culture has to offer says so some more things uh, there but I, I've followed this project for a while and I really do like the gaming fundamentals of it and like I've said I'm not a gamer um, but I do like it. They had an about video. It's not. I don't see it on the website anymore. But that really impressed me a lot. Talking about the fundamentals of the project. Um, scrolling down the page, I mean, you see they have they have games. We're going to talk about in a second. Um, it was listed on MEXC, and they they unlisted themselves from up there, which I don't. That's very odd. I'm not sure what happened with that. They said more exchanges coming soon. It's not on very many centralized exchanges. But this is something I noticed with the partnerships. Amazon Web Services. I think that's a really good uh, partner to have. So, some more things about them, uh, you know, gaming, obviously, and I like to check out the followings of their um, certain games. So here is a whole. All right, that's the first game they display. So let's check out that following on Twitter. And 10K followers. So they have several games. They have they have numerous games. So I think that's pretty good for just one of their games to have 10K followers. Uh, their page at, at itself. 40,000 followers is a lot for a $5 million market cap. Um, and this is the, the founder. His name is Russ. I follow him on Twitter, too. I can tell he really cares about the project. He's very active, always posting it. They're always posting about new partnerships, and uh, he really cares. It's definitely not a rug, I and mean, he cares about the project a lot, and he's he's always trying to, to do things, promote it. They just started some staking recently. I didn't do it. I thought about it, um, but but decided not to. Um, but I think there's some things I like here. I really like the fundamentals of the gaming and, and all the different things that they that they um, that they offer. I said they have uh, more than just this, this one game. They have a, a few games, and you know it's designed for uh, a few different aspects, kind of like Wazder, where it's trying to connect people. Um, that that they offer that as well, only with the gaming. So. Uh, I do think there's a lot of things I like about Medicaid. I just would like to see it show some more strength. Same thing with, with Myria. Um, so that's Medicaid coming in at number eight. So next up, we got playable games. So um, a playable games is a, uh, and the token is called 3UL or 3BULL, however you want to pronounce it. And I, this is something I got into real early. I got into the first couple of days it was out, and I was well over 10x on, on my initial investment a few times. You know, I didn't put a whole lot in down here. And since then, it's, it's just really sold off and not showing any strength where it's basically back at where it opened up at. So if it doesn't bounce soon and it goes below that, I'm worried it's going to keep uh, just bleeding off and sell off, kind of like we saw Maria or um, Medicaid, and just have one of those patterns where it just continues to trend down for, uh, for, uh, for a while. Um, circulating supply, just over 10%, so that's not great either. Um, but 2.6 million market cap, so that's very low, and this is in the gaming sector um, on the Avalanche. So let's see what Coin Market Cap says about it. So Playable Games is a gaming publisher that combines PC-based games with crypto. We use the three old coin in all our games, and we produce that coin from nodes. So they sell nodes. They have nodes and gaming. They came out with a uh, a game recently called Nexus, and I'm not a, a gaming expert, but it looked pretty good to me. Some people I know that are gamers, they thought it looked pretty cool. Um, there's a website, um, you know, pretty typical of what you see of these gamers. But it's a it's a it's a good website. It's uh you know it it will direct you to their coin, to their nodes, to their games. Um, I like the website on Twitter. They have about twenty thousand followers for a new project because just just thing it just came out in June. Um, that's a pretty good following. Um, now the Nexus game, I couldn't find it to have an actual page on Twitter, so. Uh, it does, you know, I couldn't find a following for that actual game. Now, the tokenomics, remember I said it was only a little over 10% circulating supply. 
but the tokenomics actually are pretty good when you look into the white paper is deflationary they have a burn mechanism for 10 percent and like i mentioned they have nodes and with like maria a lot of the to uh, tokens will be unlocked through the nodes and it's going to be a long time before all these tokens are unlocked and this graph kind of puts it um into perspective right here it's gonna be 10 years it says it over here i think somewhere five billion coins are made each year for 10 years yeah so I, that's okay i don't mind that it's gonna be a long time for they're all in a uh, circulating supply so the fact that it's 10 percent that doesn't bother me with a, a project like this that has a burn mechanism and they're not going to be released for many years but they're going to unlock i guess five billion a year um so I do like this project. I would have liked it a lot better if it would have shown some strength, you know, like I had mentioned on, on the chart. Um, when it bounced here, I thought that it was coming down to, to kind of not quite touch this level and leave a gap and that this might be one of these projects that just keeps trending up. And that didn't happen. It started to go down. I would have had this a top five project if you'd asked me probably a month ago, but I don't like how it's sold off. I still like the potential. I still like a lot of things about the project. I like the team. It's got a real team, real people that have been involved in gaming and crypto. So I do like it, but it has slid um, on my list right now. And I'll, I'm not going to buy it right now. It's coming back to the, the opening price, but I'm um, I'm going to wait. If it starts to bounce here a little bit, I might start to DCA it. But um, right now, I'm a little worried about the weakness that it's showing. So that is playable games in 3 old. So we're coming in at 6. We got a project called Orchain, and it's an, um, an AI project with a market cap of around 30 million. And um, it's been out since late 2020. So it came out during kind of like late in the last bull run, and it, it, it made a big spike like before the Bitcoin uh, first all-time high and then just kind of trailed off and um, it, it had another little spike on the second Bitcoin all-time high and then hasn't really done too much then if you look over the last year it has um, it did have a little run up back then but when you zoom out that didn't really show register too much on chart so it hasn't shown too much strength in these uh, market conditions but um, I like the AI sector for one and it has a respectable market cap and let's see what uh coin market cap says about it so the world's first ai powered oracle for ecosystems and blockchains beyond data oracles we aim to become the first ai layer one blockchain sphere with the complete ai ecosystem so <clears throat> uh, i looked into the fundamentals of this project some and um i do like it i read through the the documents and um it it talks a lot about um uh trust driven ai like ai that you can trust and trust in machines um so you know i've read a lot of books about ai and a, a lot of people have a misconception of it and a lot think that you know ai is going to be evil these evil robots and stuff like that <clears throat> and it doesn't really work that way and it's more so the people who uh, program the ai so they talk about that in the programming language that a lot of smart contracts um, are in are uh, in more complicated languages for security reasons so with the AI they can use simpler programming language and I guess that's supposed to be an advantage and I'm not a blockchain expert but um, I like the fundamentals of it and what they were trying to do and I like AI and then on Twitter you know almost 50,000 followers for a, a project like this I think is pretty good so there's some, there's some things that I don't love about it but overall I, I do like it um, uh, like I said, I like AI to, to have a run up at some point in this bull cycle. So that's Aura Chain coming in at number six. Now, like some of these other projects we've talked about recently, there's some things I like about Veracity, there's some things not so much. Now, uh, the market cap uh, 52 million. When I first started the uh, research on this video, it was around 40 million, uh, still a little bit higher than some of these other uh, projects. It's been going up some lately. Circulating supply only at 10%. Um, I don't love that. And also breaking one of my rules here, where it came out 2000, it had uh, accumulation or bear market, whatever you want to call it, uh, leading up to the last bull cycle, and its highs coincided with uh, with the Bitcoin highs more or less, um, and then it's just kind of been down like like most all. If we look at it over the last year, get a little bit better picture because like we talked about, it can be kind of hard when you zoom out like that when they have those big um, run ups. So over the last year, you kind of see it had a resurgence at the beginning of the year um then a little bit of a sell-off and now it's been coming back some uh lately so what is uh veracity 
because I love the fundamentals of this project. <clears throat> so Veracity is an open ledger ecosystem designed to fight advertising fraud um, and uh, powered by Nix with AI, machine learning, and cutting edge blockchain technologies. Now I'm breaking one of my rules here, like I said, where it, it was out before um, the cycle and, and lots of times if things have a low market cap um, and you see a chart like this, or similar to this, it can it can be that that it's dead, but I don't think this is a dead project. And it's still 50 million market cap. It's not like it's uh, two million or something like that, and, and going down. And it's been showing strength. Um, if you zoom in on uh, like a weekly or daily time frame over the last year, looks pretty good on chart. Um, their Twitter following is massive, 320,000 followers. I see this project's hot. I see a lot of uh, influencers talk about it a lot. I'm sure some people see it like, oh, you only got that as five. Well, for a few reasons, the circulating supply, the market cap's a little higher. Um, but I do think they have some some good um, use case. They talk about this a lot, that $100 billion, they've been saying this for, for a few years, that $100 billion is lost in advertising fraud. So they have this thing called Veraviews that um, it's supposed to be able to sort out the bot um, views from ads, <clears throat> I guess I, I watched some videos on it and like uh, advertising, it takes like four steps. Like you need a, a business that needs to advertise, you need a platform like YouTube, and then you need somebody making the videos, you know, like a YouTube content creator, and then the viewers to watch it. And they, it, it talked about how in that, um, you know, stream, in that process, how they, they, they cut out advertising fraud. And they have something called Watch to Earn, um, where you, uh, I guess, you earn VRA by watching the um, the ads. Um, they also have gaming, and the Veraview stuff is is uh, in with their gaming. Their team is definitely um, a good group of people, and they even have a write up under the people as they list them, which lots of projects they don't they um, they don't have that just sort of the people or whatever. So there's definitely some, some good things that I, I like about this project. Now, to the circulating supply, when I look at the white paper, you know, it, it talks about this 10 billion um, tokens that they're going to set aside. Um, yeah, down here, eventually the 10 billion tokens are allocated for acquisition purposes that they may go back into circulating supply, like they may sell them to help the, the team out. And I've been seeing talk on Twitter lately I, mean, I don't follow it every day, the, the, the project like that, but I guess they're burning some of that, I've, I've heard. But even so, it doesn't show me clearly here, and I've looked through. I don't see like a graph or anything showing like when it's going to be um, unlocked like a lot do. Um, and, it, and if I go into some of these links, maybe it, there's further information about that. But I don't, um, I don't love that it's not easily accessible. Normally that's... You know, there's a reason, and I'm not, I'm, you know, when these projects, <clears throat> if I've, I, I do like VRA, but it's not that I'm going to, you know, be my number one bag, and that's why I'm putting everything into it. If, if this information isn't readily available, then sometimes that is a little bit of a red flag to me, not that I couldn't keep digging and find out more of an unlock schedule and things like that. Um, so I love the fundamentals for VRA. I, I like a lot of things about it. Um, but there is some red flag to me, the circulating supply. Um, but I, I think the fundamentals um, are going to carry into the next bull market, and it can have a, a market cap well over a billion dollars. Um, from what I understand, it's kind of a competitor to Theta, um, which um, is a similar project. And a lot of people think that this has a lot more room for gain than, uh, than Theta. So that's VRA uh, starting the top five. All right, getting into it to the down to the last four. So I'm gonna do something a little different for these. I'm gonna compare three and four and one and two uh, by some of the criteria we're looking at and see how they stack up. Because uh, it's really tough calling to get down these these last ones like this. And uh, and and at the end of the day, you know, all this is speculation. You know, not financial advice. And uh, it's just fun to uh, to speculate and see which ones we might think do will will do better in the bull run. So we got Rio Network. Uh, the token's name is Rio and Nakamoto Games Naka. So we're going to look at uh, Nakamoto Games first. Really, high, Both of these are really hot projects. I see them mentioned on Twitter a lot. If you look at all time, Nakamoto Games came out right at the end of the, of the bull run. So it's not really a, an accurate depiction of it. Um, if we look over the last year, 
it's been just one way. It's just been been trending up, showing a lot of strength. Uh, market cap of 55 million. When I first started the research for this video, it was around 40 million. So it's been going up lately. Circulating supply also around 40 percent. So that that's not bad as well. And if we read what Coin Market Cap says about Nakamoto Games. Nakamoto Games is a play-to-earn gaming platform offering multiple fun and addictive crypto games. The platform will bring massive earning opportunities to both gamers and non-gamers as we expect crypto gaming will continue to grow. So, no surprise, it's a, uh, a, a gaming um, project, and they have a lot of games here. Um, I'm, you know, I've looked through them, they all look good. I mean, like I said, I'm not a gamer, um, but other people I know that are gamers, they really like their games. They think that they have uh, have a lot of good, it, like the fundamentals of their gaming uh, seem seem really strong. Twitter, 165,000 followers. Pretty big. You know, I kind of get almost uh, Nintendo vibes from, from some of the stuff, like old school Nintendo a little bit. Um, see their signs of upside like a sideways bitcoin symbol but uh a lot to like here you know circulating supply the market cap is a little higher but um you know i was getting into this <clears throat> when it was a little bit lower and it's one of these that i that i watch for dips but strong projects you know sometimes they don't really dip too much and you can see the strengths that it's shown over the the last year so i do like this project a lot um, if I was gonna stack it up to to Relio Network, it's tough. But I, I you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna look at it. But I, w I would probably favor uh, Nakamoto Games a little bit over Relio. So if we look at uh, Relio Network coming out with a market cap only a million dollars. That is super super small. Um, circulating supply though only at eight percent. If we look at all time. Um, it came out in 2020, you know, not really what we'd like to see, big spike here, um, but the price action's kind of, kind of weird, kind of like, um, can't remember what project we looked at, or, or a chain, um, where it doesn't really match the, the Bitcoin highs, and it's just kind of been, been going down, but if you look over the last year, you know, you see it, it came back, and it's been showing some strength, <clears throat> and the reason is, it's what's called a, um, RWA, Real World Asset, and it's a new class, a new sector of, of crypto, if you want to uh, to call it that. And it's like real world tokenization of assets. And this is the main project I always see talked about it. The Relo Network describes itself as an end-to-end -end blockchain based uh, performance of the issue investment and lifecycle management of digital securities and crypto assets. It means it combined to a 100% on-chain decentralized exchange. So you look at the Twitter page, kind of what they're talking about. 42,000 followers, that's, that's pretty good, especially with a market cap of a million dollars. Um, wait till you can, wait until a house can be traded directly for another house on a DEX. And that's what it's talking about, the tokenization of real world assets. Now I've read through all this stuff and I do think that there is some compliance issues that they're going to face um, overall, um, but they they do have um, a good good team of people. These are all um, legitimate serious people here that are all listed on their team. Uh, look into it a little bit more because the circulating supply. So their white paper it do, it talks about it some, but it doesn't have like an unlock. It, it it doesn't spell it out. And here's another thing: a lot of people may not know. There's a second token with the project called RST. I never see that get talked about or. At least if I do, I, I never realized it. Um, I see Rio all the time. Um, and it talks about, it has kind of a comparison of them down here. Um, it looks like you have to have a K, like the RST, you have to be KYC'd to, uh, to get it. Um, so I, I, I did look into the RST a little bit, but for this video, I'm going to focus on Rio. Um, this is from their... Uh, their docs, you know, Rio is designed as a multi-chain layer one web three ecosystem issuance and management of digital native and real world assets across many non EVM and EVM compatible chains. So it's, it's trying to tokenize um, real world assets and be able to trade them on a DEX or on an exchange. Um, you know, reading through their documents, not to get uh, uh, too, um, too out there on it. It seems like some of the things they want to solve, it's 
they still have like KYCs and stuff like that. So, so I'm not sure how they're gonna um, gonna gonna figure all that out. But this talks about the circulating supply a little bit. It's the best thing I could find about it. It looks like it's gonna be a study um, release over the next eight years. So, hopefully, um, it won't be a huge dump at any point. It'll just be a study release over the next couple of years. It's still very low um, circulating supply of eight percent. Um, so they have this, uh, sorry, go down here, this Realio world, Realio verse, and that's what this other browser is here, um, Fork the World, so it's, you know, like a metaverse, like a, uh, model of the world, I guess, you know, real world themed, uh, immersive digital land experience that enables you to buy, sell, and build land parcels for a virtual earth. So a lot of things going on here. A lot of things are like with with Relio. Um, I think that there's a lot going on that can be uh, difficult to understand. Um, you know, that, and that's with taking a deep dive and, and looking through it thoroughly. Um, but I still do like it. But I do think that that there it's a little bit of a complex um, project. So market cap. Which one of these uh, uh, wins the market cap battle? Well, that's that's definitely going to be uh, Relio. That's definitely uh, got the, the lower market cap. S circulating supply. Um, now that's definitely going to be Naka. Fundamentals. Mm, you know, this is probably um, depends on 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 what you uh, you know what you value. I'm actually going to call this a wash because I favor the gaming uh, sector. However, this real world tokenization stuff, it's, it's new and I wanna see how, how that plays out. Uh, so the sector and fundamentals, I'm actually gonna call that a wash. Is there a real product? Um, the answer on both of these is, yeah, I would say it's a real product with, with Relio um, because they, they do ha have, um, it's not a physical product, but it, it is a an, an idea that is a real product to tokenize real world assets. How long has it been out? Um, definitely going to give the edge here to Naka. Uh, social followings. Once again, we're going to give that to to Naka. They have more the social strength on chart. Uh, Relio has come on this year, but I'm still, if you look at the chart over the last year, it's still Naka website. You know, Relio, they have, um, they have uh, like two or three websites. I, I don't really like that. Um, th some of the information was in different places. The white paper, I actually had to straight Google Relio white paper. I couldn't find a link to it on the other sites. So I think they need to centralize some of the things they have going on. So I'm going to give that to Naka. Their website's very easy to understand, points you to their stuff. Um, it was very easy. Partnerships. Um, I saw that both had partnerships. I'll call that a wash again. Um, still, all things considered, it looks like Nakamoto Games is the stronger project, in my opinion. But there's a lot to like with Relio. I mean, a million-dollar market cap. Circling lighting supply is low, but it looks like that's going to be... Um, released at, at a decent like there's not going to be a huge dumps on the market for for tokens i think it's a complex project i think there's a lot to unpack here even with me as an experienced crypto user going through it, it you know it wasn't a hundred percent clear to me they also have the second token um they have a third token which is like a stable coin um i think it has massive potential with a lot of these projects i look at what you know it, um going back to earlier in the countdown while talking about insurance compared to Trios, which was the next one after that. I think that Trios is a lot safer, like it's going to, to have a good game. I think it, it's safer, but if insurance gets the right conditions, it could really moon. Um, and, and I hope that, that people understand what I, what I mean by that. Some of these are higher risk, higher reward. Some are a little safer. I think Rio is it has a huge potential and I think Nakamoto Games does too but I think that that Rio is kind of like the insurance here and Nakamoto Games would kind of be like the Trios and while I mentioned Trios I, I forgot to mention that one good thing about Trios is they have a lot of patents pending um, and that's kind of rare for a, a blockchain project to have so many patents pending like they do that's one reason I think it's gonna do well but anyway so we're going to go with Nakamoto Games at number three and Rio at number four 
These are by far my two favorite small cap projects. We have Mask, which is a privacy project, and Games for a Living, which is obviously a gaming project. I love both these projects. It's hard for me to pick a winner out of the two. <clears throat> Full disclosure, these are by far my, my two small, uh, largest small cap holdings. The rest of them I diversify pretty well and try to DCA at opportune times, but these are, are by far. Um, I, I would say after my next uh, third and fourth biggest holding, I probably have four or five times the amount of mask and and games for a living so let's check them out real quick <clears throat> mask like I said it's a privacy project 7.3 million dollar market cap when I first started uh, doing this video I think I had about a six and a half million it's been going up pretty uh, decently lately as well circulating supply 91 percent almost all in circulating supply if we look at when it came out it came out around the time Bitcoin was doing its uh, run up to its first all-time high last market but what I like about this chart so much is we've looked at a lot of these now. If something was out last market, you see it lots of times had these two big spikes that coincide with Bitcoin's run up and then it just goes down. Or maybe it has an ICO spike and then another little spike where it tried to go up one time and then just goes down. Or um, some kind of news event that has some weird spike and then just goes. So this did not do that. See, it made an all time high in the bear market earlier this year. It made an all time high. And then it didn't just sell off after that. Look, it's found support here twice now. So, um, and that's those two times I was buying it uh, a lot. I was, I was really buying it up then. I first got in the project sometime around here. And after it had that big spike up there on that little uh, pullback, I, I got into it heavy there as well. So what does CoinMarketCap say um, mask is? So Mask combines the benefit of VPN and Tor technology to create a superior next generation privacy software where users are rewarded for supporting an uncensored global web. Users gain privacy and anonymity online while helping promote internet freedom by using the Mask network. Users gain increased internet accessibility to get content that is unavailable in the region and additionally gain privacy features so their traffic cannot be inspected. If we check out, um, well, so just to that, the, the Mask browser it is more secure than VPN or Tor so it, it's more secure than either one of those and I've noticed uh, lately lots of uh, country maybe not lots but some of them are banning VPNs I saw just the other day in Africa a country banned a VPN and I saw the um, country had like 60 million people in it so you can't ban this I, I don't think you can a company could block their IPs where you download the browser but it's just a download file so you could share the file however uh, many different ways so we look at their um, their their Twitter page only 13.7 uh, thousand followers but if you remember a tour which had a market cap of about um, 10 times 11 times what mask is right now and they had like 20,000 followers so I think some of that is a privacy sector you're not gonna have as many followers as you would in the gaming sector which is one of the reasons why I like the gaming sector um, but this is the main website that they've had for a while um, that, that talks about about what they do it's got their documents in it and, and things like that uh, we don't need to look at the white paper it's already all in circulating supply basically and now this is a web a newer website they have and this is where you download the browser now if you notice I've been doing this entire YouTube video on the mask browser if you look up here in the uh, corner until the end here where I've been comparing projects I'm using two browsers but I've done this whole thing on the uh, on the mask browser and I, I like it a lot um, you see it says I'm in Japan now it's more secure than uh, VPN or tour like I said it's got these um, categories up here too so they can help you keep things browser straight depending on your work finance play you know so you have those those browsers um, there it's got a home with a dashboard so when you first come on to here um, all of these will be red and this earth right here I have like a power button here and you, you you click that and then you're secure and everything like that um, you select that and then you can join the network and earn mask and, and everything like that and every time I've done a, a speed test it's it's fine I mean it's not probably not as fast as my normal browser would be but just for all-purpose uh, browsing it's fine I haven't noticed any 
issues um you know it's still in beta uh you know every now and then i've seen a few buggy things sometimes if i clicked on a link i couldn't get the link to come up in the browser and, but if i copied it and then pasted it in there it came up um and it's still fairly new but overall i like it a lot I, I, you know it's what i've been using of my main browser um i know the uh the founder of this project his name's Corey. And I've communicated with him several times, and he I can't say enough good things about him. He, he is definitely one of the good guys in the space. He loves this project. He's a, such a down-to-earth good guy. They have a lot of partnerships, and you, you know I, I, I should have gotten a list of the partnerships and, and been prepared for that when I got here, but he's always out there making partnerships with people. Um, so they got a lot of good partnerships. I mean, they really check all the boxes when you go down um, – everything that, that I'm looking at for the, these small caps. So let's check out uh, Gains for a Living because I like this one a lot too now. So let's not let's not discount Gains for a Living just yet. <laughs> um, but a lot, lot to like with, uh, with, with Mask, I, I think that's fair to say. So Gains for a Living, $27, 000, $27 million market cap. I've been in this project since the start, since at least April, down here, uh, mid-April is when I first started buying it. So I'm up pretty well on it, obviously, but I've DCA'd all the way up and it came out earlier this March and it has just been straight up ever since. Um, so, you know, strength on chart, that's a big plus. Now circulating supply, only 11%, but we are going to, uh, we're going to look at that. So what does CoinMarket say? <clears throat> Games for a Living is a Web3 gaming platform that aims to revolutionize the gaming industry by releasing the first sustainable blockchain game with its first title, Elemental Raiders. The platform plans to add subsequent first-party titles such as Diamond Dreams. In addition, the platform will offer a frictionless login, wallet integration, payments, GFAL ID and portal, as well as marketplace and analytic tools. So it, it's just a really good gaming site. Um, they have that game Elemental Raiders that is really popular. It has its own website. So if we look at Games for a Living, um, this is Games for a Living website. Well, if we look at their their Twitter page, fifty three thousand followers. Um, not not too bad. You expect a little bit more, but here's what's what's weird. That Elemental Raiders, fifty four, two hundred fifty four thousand followers. There's a lot of people playing this game. Now, like I said, I'm sure some of these are bots or whatever, but this game is hugely popular. And this is the first game they've come out with. So if any their other games are any um, going to be any indication, then I, you know, I, I think that they're going to be huge. They're going to be a monster in this gaming uh, sector, which is what I think will be the biggest sector next, next time. So this is their white paper. I don't love the tokenomics, how it's laid out. I, I never like it when it's not easily readable. And that doesn't mean that, that we can't figure out what's going on here. But this is talking about the token distribution um, uh, on where it, it all went. But the big thing is like when it, it unlocks, right? And you can go into these, but it, it does have this table here. And... Um, it talks about the different times and there's different lockup periods and different vesting periods. Um, so it's not the easiest to, to sift through on when a lot of these tokens are getting unlocked. Um, if you click on each one of these over here to the side, it tells you a little more. Uh, for instance, the first set of tokens will be unlocked on June 13th. What is the private sale? Let's go to like liquidity. Um, these tokens will have a 24% unlock public listing, a 12-month vesting period. The team, some of these have like a 48-month vesting period. Uh, here's a vesting period of 108 months, a lockup period of 12 months. Advisors, um, lockup period of 12 months, followed by a vesting period of 24 months. So it, it is a little hard to um, to go through and try, try to see exactly when all these are being unlocked. And... I, I can tell you this: It's not like there's going to be a be a huge dump that um, that it, that I think is going to bring the drag the market cap down. Um, I don't love the tokenomics, but I you know I love the gaming sector. And as I had said before, there's other things last market cycle like Gala didn't have good tokenomics that had uh, great gains. So you know the social followings for this is huge. I, I really 
Like, and I liked it better when the market cap, it stayed in the, the like 15, 16, 17 million for a while. I liked it better uh, there, but I still still like it a lot here. So when you, when you stack the, these up together, um, you know, market cap, I'm definitely, I, I gotta give that to Mass. Um, I do think that, that this is a low cap considering the project, but still gotta give that to, to Mask at such a low market cap. And the thing that, that puzzles me about Mask is when I see other um, competitors with higher market caps that aren't even offering what they are, um, it just, it, you know, makes me feel like enough people just don't know about the project, really. Um, so circulating supply, definitely Mask. Now, fundamentals, I'm going to call this one a wash because I think in the gaming sector that they are, Games for a Living is top shelf. I think in the privacy sector, Mask is top shelf. So I'm going to call the fundamentals even. However, for sector, I am going to give that to uh, Games for a Living because, as I said, I think the gaming sector will have uh, bigger, um, uh, bigger gains. Is this a real product? I'm going to give that a wash as well because Mask is an actual browser. It's an actual product that I'm using right now as I do this video. Games for a Living also is a real product, and a lot of people are playing that game. You might could make the argument that I should give that to Games for a Living because so many pe more people are playing that than using the Mass browser, but I'm still going to call that a wash because the, the product of the Mass browser, in my opinion, is so good. How long has the project been out? Um, and this is kind of uh, goes along with strength down here, and I'm actually going to call that a wash too. This has been out longer, but it wasn't like it was out before last bull market or anything like that and the strength that it's shown on chart to make a new, an all-time high in the bear market and gains for a living to be just straight up when it when it first came out i actually consider those equal i consider both of those to show e strength in different ways and it depends on how you um you weight that but i'm going to call that a wash as well um website i'm going to call that a wash even because I think that um, they both are clear. They both point you to their products. I, I wouldn't say one is any better than the other. Partnerships, um, I've seen more partnerships with, with Mask than, um, than Gangs for a Living, but I've seen partner Gangs for a Living seems to be doing some of that stuff on social media as well. So all things considered, I love, love, love Gangs for a Living, but I have to give it to Mask as number one. Even though Games for a Living's in the, the, the uh, gaming sector, and I think it's going to have huge gains. And once again, guys, like I said, at the end of the day, you know, this is for speculation. You know, we don't know. Nobody knows, no matter how, how adamant they are on Twitter, um, which is going to have the bigger gains at the end of the day. Nobody really knows that. But all things considered, I am going to have to go with Mask at number one. All right, so last thing I'm going to talk about, guys, for anyone who's still tuning in, is how to DCA, you know, in conclusion. And... So I, I, when I DCA something, I, I find a level that I identified and I will highlight that level. When it comes out of that level, I'll buy. So I'm not just buying it every day. So once mass left here, I had identified this level. And, uh, you know, you want to check out, you know, how I um, do TA and some of these things. Check out some of my other videos on trading and technical analysis. But I identified this zone, and when Mass came back down here, I bought. And this is the Mass to ETH uh, valuation, which I think it's better to look at that because it's not listed on but one centralized exchange. So most people are buying it with ETH, so I think that's better uh, a better way to judge it. But I, that's what I did. And I didn't buy any up here, and now just now that it's come back here, I'm starting to buy it. Because I think it's going <clears> to <throat> make a range here where this is going to be now the bottom of the range and it, it, it'll hopefully range in here or, or even better yet channel up so I just started like yesterday buying mask again if we look at gains for a living <clears throat> the way that I had um, done that I told you I, I got in gains for a living early so I was buying way down here this is the MEXC chart I had got it well before it was listed on MEXC even and I see it going in this channel and <clears throat> I had sold some and taken profit when it broke uh, 0 0.021 and I did that based on these wicks over here, and it just blew right through that. The next week, when it came back down, I had an order there, and I rebought what I had um, <laughs> sold, and I didn't buy any more gains for a living until it came back to that level at um, 021, which was just last week. And I've been buying more in this level, this low 20s, and I'm going to keep buying it. I'll see what happens here, but I think 
what we might see is some some small weekly candles maybe go into the, the this channel maybe and then then go up from there if we do see that then i'll keep dca and uh gains for a living at, at this level i mean will it come back down here and visit this you know it could but i see it as breaking through this level broke through those and now like i just mentioned with mass it's going to come down here and form a new range and this is now the bottom of the range so i started buying gains for a living too so i just want to talk about that so i'm not just blindly buying these um these assets there is a rhyme or reason to how um, i'm doing this so thanks for anybody who tuned into the end of the video which is probably not very many people because i know it's very long but if you want to get to the bottom of the, these things and have uh, legitimate information, you know, you can't do that in, in a five minute video. So anyway, appreciate it for everybody who tuned into the end and uh, see you guys next time. Later.